Well, hello there. My name is Vladimir. Welcome to my home studio. Today we are checking out the Isotope Spire. A quick disclaimer, even though I don't get paid to do this review, I do get to keep the product. I'm pretty sure at least. But as always, that doesn't affect in any way what I'm going to say. If the product's good, it, I say it's good. If there's some issues, I mention those. This is going to be a pretty kind of in-depth long video, so grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. The Isotope Spire is basically a mobile recording studio that you control with either your iPad or your iPhone. On the front side, it has a built-in condenser microphone and a headphone out. On the back side, there's another headphone out, there's a power input and two combo jacks inputs with an option to have a phantom power as well. And if you connect to input jack number one on the back side, it disables the condenser microphone. On the top, you'll find buttons for record and play, buttons to start a new project or new song, the sound check button, which basically is kind of automated uh, input gain adjustment. And if you click the volume button and drag your finger on the slight shiny thingy, it allows you to adjust the overall volume of your headphones. What makes the Spire pretty special is the fact that it has a built-in rechargeable battery, which makes it a great portable recording solution for many kind of situations. The whole unit has a nice weight to it and it feels really well built, except these buttons feel kind of unresponsive for lack of a better word. They're kind of rubbery and I don't know, I just don't like how they feel. Setting up the Spire with my phone was really easy, and when I say really easy, I really mean it. I just got a wireless printer that's behind the camera, and their super easy and quick setup took me over an hour to being able to print anything, so yeah, I really mean it. To connect to the Spire, you turn the unit on, then you open the Spire app on your phone and hit connect. The app tells you to go to your iOS settings and connect to Spire Wi-Fi. Once you are connecting to the Spire's Wi-Fi, hit the two flashing buttons on the device and you're done. The next time you're using the Spire, just hit connect in the app, hit OK and you're done. It's easily one of the most simple setups I've ever done. The Spire has a built-in memory, which means that you can actually use the unit without touching the app. So for example, you can go and do an interview and use the built-in condenser mic. So in order to do that, you would just turn the unit on, hit the new song button, hit the sound check button where it adjusts the kind of input gain level and then hit record and that's it. Once you're done or once you get home you can connect to the Spire using the app and it will automatically sync that project on your phone as well. The Spire seems to be using some sort of dual storage system where it stores the projects on the device but also on your iPhone or your iPad. One of the cool ideas the Spire does is that you can actually share those Spire projects with, let's say, your other band members. For example, I could record an acoustic guitar track using this, then I would send that project to my singer and he or she could use, for example, the microphone on his or her phone to record a vocal track onto that same project and then that person can send the project back to me. You get the idea, that's pretty cool. I think you need to have at least one hardware device to use it. I'm not 100% sure about that. All right, I grabbed an acoustic guitar. I'm going to move on over here so you can see the screen capture happening over there. And let's fire up a new project like this. And by the way, I'm using this kind of hack system where I'm using one of the headphone outs going on into my Apollo Twin, so you should be able to hear what's happening on this Spire. Quickly to insert a small disclaimer in between. Uh, as I was editing the video, I realized that I actually forgot something, which is that the stereo out or the headphones out from the Spire is a stereo track. And when I went to Apollo, it's kind of converted to mono. I'm not 100% sure whether it just takes either left or right channel or it somehow summarizes those, but for perhaps that reason, you cannot hear the amp sims I'm demonstrating, but with me blending the room microphone and what Spire is hearing, I was able to kind of come up with sounds that should pretty well demonstrate what's happening. But also when I will show some of the kind of panning mixing options, they won't work because we are listening to a mono track. So sorry for that. 
as you can see it immediately arms the truck for you and before we do anything else let's hit the sound check button so it will monitor my acoustic playing and adjust the input gain based on that Like that, it dropped it just a little bit. And as I mentioned, you can apply, no, sorry, not sound check, the recording effects. There's amp sounds, and this will sound really weird because it's an acoustic guitar and we're using this microphone. There's another amp. Bass. Acoustic shaver, this is something that I actually use in the track. I like this quite a lot. It's good. Let's quickly browse to others. Warm voice. This is for vocals. It adds some sort of distortion also as well. I think I use this on my vocals. And while it does add distortion, it also adds a bunch of reverb that you can get rid of. Space. Deep space. <laughs> Vintage. Dub. Echo. 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 Uh, pedal. 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 And another pedal which does something. But yeah, let's go back to the acoustic shape because that's actually, that's actually something, something we want to use. So you can adjust these by dragging these controls up or down. It's back down both of these and in order to adjust the tempo go to the tempo page there's a few different subdivisions let's click the metronome on and you can adjust the tempo by dragging the white thing over here or you can tap in the tempo or you can input the exact tempo you want so let's go for 102 for example and let's record a track by the way, there's a pre-roll, something I always forget to mention. Not always, I just forgot to mention. Let's go. Like that, and as you can see, it immediately arms the second track for me. Uh, I just hope my screen capture didn't just mess up everything. Uh, let's adjust, not adjust, assign an icon to this track by clicking the number and make it a guitar. And re let's record a second track as well, so we can then check out the mixing thing. Going on, I'm going to record a guitar solo over here. That sounds to me like a morning show intro, which is completely fine. And let's jump to the mix pane. No, quickly. Actually, I have to mention there's a undo and redo button. So basically you can go one step back and then kind of reverse that step, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And you can also loop the whole track if you want to. But we're not going to do that, we don't need it. Let's assign a second icon here as well, so that will be the electric guitar icon. On the mix pane, this is basically a visual mixer, so if I drag something on the left or to the right, it will pan it over there, and if I drag something up or down, it will increase or decrease the volume. You can also double tap these icons, so they will go back to the center panning-wise and a kind of zero boost or cut volume. You can mute individual tracks as well, and when playing... Mm -hmm. 
you can force touch one of the icons and basically solo them, which is kind of cool, especially when you have eight tracks going on. So let's pan these left and right and see how it sounds. <laughs> like that what i also need to show you is that you can edit the existing tracks by dragging this cursor thing and if you want you can actually kind of zoom in by force touching it again and it will zoom in and also play a small kind of clip so you can know where you're at and you can record kind of overdubs from here but you can go back to previous recordings if you get what I mean except, except like one step with the undo button uh, you can also sorry pressing the wrong button you can also trim the tracks but the way it works is that you select a point from which you can delete the whole track to the left or to the right side and that's it no any other kind of trimming available but with the option of kind of zooming in and kind of being able to record on top of your previous things, it's fine because it also uses kind of a few second pre-roll. So if I would want to kind of record the guitar solo from here and I would hit record. And because that was a worse take, I'm going to hit undo and we're back to my original solo. So you know how this works now. And once your beautiful song is ready, hit export. You can give the track a name. I'm too lazy to do that right now, so I'm going to ignore that. You can send yourself the full mix down with the effects, the panning and everything as text or email. And if you want a higher quality file, you can save it or send it to yourself in a WAV file, you can share it on social media and SoundCloud. Then, as I mentioned, you can export this, this whole thing as a Spire project and share it with your bandmates, for example, who also use Spire. And you can also export individual tracks, but bear in mind everything that's happening here in the mixing side, panning and volume will also be exported. It will export uh, stereo tracks, and there will be the panning and effects and everything. And in order to avoid kind of having hard-coded panning in your tracks, you can double tap on these icons and they will go center and volume-wise, kind of no cut or boost or anything like that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if I would hit the mono button, whether this whole thing would actually export the tracks in mono then. But because for the song it exported everything in stereo and then I had to convert them back to mono because I was having issues with some of the plugins in Logic when mixing the whole song. They just didn't like the stereo track thing. So this might fix that. I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty fast and fun to start just laying down guitar tracks, for example. And it really didn't take me almost any time to learn how to use this. All right, that was a lot of stuff to go through. If you're still with me, well done. Now we'll get to the part that's probably the most interesting to me at least, and that is how far you can kind of push this whole thing or what can you do with this device and the app. If you didn't know that yet, I recorded a full cover of YouTube's Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. Uh, using the Isotope Spire. I did all of that in my living room. I'm not going to play you the whole track here because this video will be super long anyway. Check out the link below in the description for the full cover. Let's listen to a quick clip from that track. Yeah. 
So right away, I have to say that this Spire app isn't for mixing. It's just for volume and pan, and you can add some effects, but not really that much. So I ended up exporting all of the tracks and mixing that in Logic. And uh, just, let's just for fun, let's play a quick comparison between the kind of mixed or balanced track in Spire and then what the end result was. Then all the colors will lead into one, lead into one. And yes, I'm still running. You know the drums and I lose the chase. Carry the cross, all oh, my shame. For the acoustic guitar, I use the kind of acoustic shaper preset, which adds some compression and reverb at least. And I was using the condenser microphone on the Spire. I can also show it to you, the condenser microphone. And here's how it sounds before I did anything to it in Logic. I actually recorded two acoustic guitar tracks, one on the left with a, with a capo and the other on the right without a capo or the other way around, I don't remember anymore. Uh, so that takes up two of the eight available tracks. Then I recorded a bass guitar and I plugged in straight into here and used the bass amp simulation on the Spire and here's how it sounds, again before any processing in Logic. So for the electric guitar track, I didn't actually use any kind of amp simulation or anything like that on the Spire. I just didn't like the sounds, to be honest. I ended up using my pedal board, and over here I used the Calambio Sky Overdrive, went through a Nemesis delay, a Tantic for some reverb, and I used the Power Amp Sim and Cabinet Simulation on the Nux Solid Studio. So from the Nux Solid Studio, I went into the Spire. And for the lead section, I actually kicked in the orange getaway driver as well. So that's where the sounds come from, not the software um, thing in the Spire itself. I just couldn't make it sound the way I wanted to. It wasn't a thing for this song, at least. Again, here's how it sounds without any post-processing in Logic. For the vocals, I had to place this pyre on top of a sugar jar just for it to be on the right height to record vocals. And I used the warm vocal preset, I think, 
And to be honest, I regret that a little bit because I was monitoring with these orange earbuds and I'm not really familiar with them yet because I got them just recently. And while recording the amount of reverb and everything sounded really manageable. But once I imported all the tracks into Logic, I realized that there was way, way, way too much reverb happening on the vocal track. But I decided not to record that once again because I had done the vocal re-recordings twice already. So I kept it in. It gives it a really interesting sound to say, <laughs> say the least. So here's how the lead vocal line sounds without any post-processing right out of the spire. And yes, I'm still running. You broke the bonds and lose the chains. Carry the cross of oh, my shame. Oh, my shame. You know I believe it. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Still haven't found. The tambourine track was recorded in exactly the same place as the lead vocals and for tambourine I actually also used the acoustic shaper and added a bunch of reverb especially to highlight those snare hits which I kind of match with the tambourine to make them sound bigger. So here's how that sounds without any post-processing in Logic. And last but not least, to get the drum sounds, I used an Omec Teleport. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this. Which is basically a pedal-sized audio interface. This is made by Orange. And I used a USB cable and an adapter to plug into my iPhone. And used a line out from the Teleport. And this allowed me to play the drums in the garage band. And that sound would be transmitted to Spire through this and I actually kind of played the drums, which is funny. And again, the same thing happened. I was monitoring with my new earbuds and I ended up kind of over compressing those drums in the garage band itself already. But again, I decided to keep them in. It's not a perfect project and that's completely fine. Here's how the drums sound by themselves. Obviously, I did a lot of mixing afterwards as well and tried to save the vocal track especially. But uh, I think it just proves that you can actually do like a pretty big sounding projects on this thing if you know what you're doing or what you're aiming for. And personally, I also find the A track limit quite uh, kind of inspiring in a way that you need to work around certain solutions. You cannot have 10,000 different tracks going on. So my drum track is a mono drum track played through an audio interface and a garage band drums, garage band, <laughs> garage band drums on the iPhone and stuff like that. So this was a really fun project to do in that sense as well. So to wrap up, I like this thing. That's probably pretty obvious already. And what I want to mention is that there was some sort of kind of sense of freedom, if you will. 
put this because I'm not tied to this desk to record. I can go to my living room or to any other place and record there with a good sounding preamps and a decent sounding condenser microphone. And I really like that. The whole interface and the app system works really well and it didn't took me almost any time to learn to use it. It's really well designed and it's intuitive and I really, really like that. As I mentioned already, the built-in microphone is pretty good. It especially seems to like my acoustic guitar. I did struggle a bit getting a good sound on the lead and backing vocals, to be honest, but it might also be just the, the kind of preset I used. Not 100% sure about that. If I'm totally honest, I'm not a huge fan of the amp sims or most of the effects on this device. And they just don't work for me. And I know there's a big update coming out pretty soon, which should add a bunch of more effects and amps and pedals apparently. So maybe that will fix the issue. Also, I would love to see an option where you could track with effects because tracking, let's say vocals with some reverb or delay and compressor makes your singing just much easier, but that you could disable those effects when you are exporting the tracks. That would be a great addition to this thing. I also think that the app should either ask or by default export all the tracks in mono and ignore all the panning and the effects and all of that. So I could actually import kind of a clean project into Logic or whatever DAW you use. Overall, I really like this thing. I will be using it for recording band rehearsals, interviews, song demos, and as a secondary preamp when I need more than two inputs, because my audio interface only has two, there's two more. There's a condenser mic here as well. That's really cool. If you live in the US, I think you can buy the Spire already. And if you live in Europe, there's a pre-sale going on at Thurman's website. Please follow the link below in the description to get yours. And yeah, if you found this video helpful and liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, there's a subscribe button for you. Click the notification bell as well. And there's some other stuff I've done. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time.